Now, how do you know that you are suffering from stress? And we already mentioned a few little symptoms, but like if you're consuming liquor or alcohol frequently, that's a sign that you're covering up some issue in your life and that has caused stress. You know, it might be based on fear, it might be based on discouragement, it might be just being angry at so certain life situations, but that's one sign. And if you smoke, you know, you smoke consistently, you chain smoking or whatever, there's an issue. You're covering up some sort of stress that's not identified, that's probably internalized. And so uh, those are just a couple of important signs that you're suffering from stress. Then, if you use foul language and cussing, I mean, what good did it ever do to cuss or to say certain words? I mean, people say, wow, that felt good. All right, what did feel good? Saying bad words and cussing? That felt good? Because you're reinforcing negativity when you do those things, you know? And that's not really something uh, positive, and that uh, creates actually more stress, and it comes out of stress and creates more stress, you know? It just goes on top. And people who are choleric and easily angry, you know, we see that in, in, in traffic. People cut us off. Wow, what, what an adventure. You know, we probably cut somebody else off five minutes later. And then when they honk, we get all upset that they honk their horn because we cut them off. But we have the right to get angry and freak out when somebody cuts us off or makes a little mistake in, in traffic. You know, and I know there's ridiculous drivers. We, we encounter them everywhere. But take a breather. You know, realize what good does it do to honk the horn and freak out because somebody uh, takes the turn too sharp or doesn't use their blinker to, to, and cuts you off or whatever. You know, if there's life in danger, I get it. Of course, we should be very, uh, we can be upset about that. But I'm just saying about everyday driving, why do you want to get upset all the time? That's not good for your health. It hurts you, not the other person that may not even know. Uh, that you're reacting, you know. There's no patience. There's no patience. We stand in line in the post office, and uh, you can observe it. It's my job to observe human behavior. But I stand there, I meditate, I pray. Whatever I want to do, I have a quiet time, and uh, I enjoy myself, you know. And then there's the other people, ma many people. They turn around, they try to get engaged I mean, in a conversation that's negative that they should hire more staff, the post office should hire more staff, and all those things, and they, they just burst with negativity and anger and stress and frustration, and that's, that's another sign that uh, there's stress in your life, and it has to be dealt with, unless, you know, you're okay of living a shorter life. I mean, I don't get it. People always try to live longer, and then when it comes to basic things like dealing with stress, which is not that difficult to do, by the way, uh, uh, then uh, suddenly uh, th it's okay to live 20 years less, you know, it's okay to cut off years from your life, it's okay to simply uh, get sick and have a terminal illness or something just because you're not dealing with stress. Then if you have no solid sleep, you know, if you can't sleep, there's an issue with stress. You know, if you, uh, th th there might be hidden worry, hidden anger, uh, things that are not resolved, that are continue to go on in your brain at night. You know, anxiousness and worry, uh, constant worry about this. You know, what did worry ever do to change the situation? I understand challenges and finding solutions, but what did worry ever do other than make you miserable and probably people around you miserable? You know, then sadness, certain sadness, and I get it. There's life situations where it's the loss of a loved one and but there's financial difficulties and things don't seem to work out as we have planned them or as we have dreamed things would work out, you know, and all those things and we become discontented, dissatisfied, but also serious issues like the loss of a loved one and we just have a hard time coping and there's sadness. But if that sadness continues, it creates, starts creating stress. It's an expression of stress you know, that has been internalized, also grief that continues for a very long time. And uh, it's, uh, and I had that in my life, you know, I was very, very sad for over a year and a half uh, due to a certain situation. And um, I cried every day, 
you know, and it, it, it was really hurting. And we can all go through s phases like this, but if it's prolonged and goes on and it's never resolved and we never deal with it, that's not very healthy and it's a sign of some sort of stress, internalized stress, or it causes stress, you know, affects our body eventually and cuts our life short. And I understand there's all kinds of situations, divorces and um, loss of job and uh, loss of a home, you know, can be tr a traumatic experience and things like that. Loss of a baby, you know, um, miscarriage, I get it, you know, and there's a time to mourn grief and be sad about that. But then there's also the people with the lack of joy. You know, it's constantly uh, being on the edge. There's no joy. F laughter is fake. If there's any laughter, nothing can be taken, you know, lightly. Everything has to be serious. And there's just a lack of joy. And then worst of it, uh, for many people worst of it, sexual malfunction. And it's, it's like, ugh, that's another sign of stress, you know, there's no performance, you know, there's no enjoyment of, of the sexual interaction. And uh, it, 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 again, can become a very source of stress, even though it's already the sexual malfunction is a result of stress, but on top of it, there comes new stress with it, you know. And if you drink more than a cup of coffee a day or caffeine intake, there's something wrong, you know. If you need to get up in the morning now, I need my cup of coffee, caffeine to get going. Yeah, right. You're already under stress. You know, your body's not functioning right anymore. There's already the results of it, you know. And those are the things that uh, we have to do. We look at it and see that we can find solutions to it to reduce stress, to eliminate stress, and in the total de-stress wellness experience, that's what we teach and carefully guide each individual participant to um, just bring this uh, uh, healing to them.